it's it's really just being really intentional, being all in, fighting for our culture, and and understanding that this is God's program, and and we're simply here to, to honor Him. Welcome to Sports Spectrum, keeping Jesus in the sports conversation. Here's your host for today's show, former ESPN producer, Jason Romano. He is Coach Jerome Tang from Kansas State. Hi, Coach. How are you? Doing wonderful. Great to be on, Jason. Great to see you. I'm glad you're here on the show. Uh, we've been excited about this conversation for a while because certainly watching when you guys have this amazing run all the way to the Elite Eight, I'm sure you wanted it to end a couple more games later. But what a fun run to watch you go through in your first season as a head coach with the Kansas State Wildcats. When you think about this past season, have you had a chance to reflect and really look at all that the Lord did through you and certainly through the team when you look back at last season? Uh, man, uh, well, I really haven't like, cause as soon as the season ends, we go right into this recruiting period and, mm. um, guys are declaring for the draft. And so they're, you know, you're trying to help them navigate that as well as bringing the next group and, right. um, you know, staff changes, those type of things are going on. So, um, but I did try to make sure that we enjoyed the ride, you know, and the, what we were going through and take moments to celebrate what God was doing um, with us, uh, both um, as far as wins and advancement and as, and spiritually what he was doing in, in, in our lives and just really uh, doing a better job of just pausing during the season and, and each time and making sure that we celebrated it. So what did he do through your life when you think back to last year? Like what was a, a key lesson that maybe the Lord taught you or showed you last year? Man, uh, trust, right? Just um, the, the word trust played a big factor in a, in a lot of things. Um, first of all, I have a local pastor here, uh, uh, Pastor Hudson, who mm -hmm. um, has come on side by side with me. And I don't attend his church. He hasn't ever invited me to come to his church. He just comes and sees me and spends time with us, does some Bible studies every now and then for our staff. Yeah. Um, but really, I needed an older guy who had been through some things in his life uh, that could pour into my life and help me keep my perspective. And one of the perspectives that he gave me was that how much God trusted me. And uh, he told me this. He said, God's love is for everybody. And God's blessings are for everybody, hmm. but God doesn't trust everybody. And wow. he gave you this platform because he trusts you. And to, to know, to wake up every morning and know, regardless of what I was going to face or what we were going into, or, you know, uh, that God trust me to, that I was going to do uh, the best to honor him in these moments it just gave me another level of confidence on how he sees me. And because the enemy tries to tell us all the time that we're not good enough, that, you yeah. know, we're not going to be able to accomplish what, you know, God purposed us to do. And does God, does God really have our back? Uh, I heard Stephen Furtick say one time the other day in one of his message, he said, if you knew that God was going to be with you in the next thing that you did, what is it that you would do? Hmm. Right. Wow. And uh, so yeah. I've just knowing that God trust me and he was with me in the next step. We just like said, man, let's go. Let's go achieve everything that we can possibly. Let, let's go be the best version of ourselves. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, let's, let's go win the whole thing. You know, <laughs> let's do it. And, yeah. And yeah, exactly. every day, just just win every day. And, uh, and so it, it's that that trust word. And it taught me that I needed to trust my players and allow them to know how much I trust them. And cause if I respond this way, knowing my heavenly father, trust me, how are they going to respond knowing that I trust them? And so that trust word has gone with us through the whole season. No, that's really good. I think also, you know, you mentioned your pastor that you kind of brought alongside with you when you're going through a long season, you know, it's very easy in talking to a lot of coaches, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, whatever sport, to lose yourself in the role of the job that you do. 
and to almost forget that, okay, there's a, there's a, a connection and a relationship with God that has to come first in my life. What was that like for you, your first year as the head coach to stay disciplined, to stay in discipled, to be in Bible studies, to have your pastor with you and sort of navigate that world, but yet still take on this responsibility that, that as you said, God has trusted you with? Yeah, well, I mean, I learned this from Scott uh, way back. You know, I mean, our, our whole time at Baylor, it was, you know, we understood that we had to be grounded and we had to hold each other accountable and we had to have the word and prayer and worship um, woven into our daily walk. And um, it was not strange to hear praise and worship music being played in the hallways at Baylor and, you know, different guys' offices. And yeah. you know, we opened every meeting with prayer and, you know, every practice with prayer. And, um, you know, just uh, we had pastors coming in and pouring the word into our lives and, we poured the word into each other's lives and what God was doing in our life. And um, that's what, that's what made, uh, that was a special thing about being at Baylor. And I wanted to to bring that environment here and, you know, um, you know, just, I, I want to be around other guys who, you know, wanted to be great husbands and great fathers. And we're always realizing that we could be a little bit better, you know, and there was something out there, that was more important than just winning basketball games. And so, um, yeah, it was, uh, I, I don't know how people do it without Jesus. That I don't either. <laughs> I think that's all you had to say. I don't either. Um, but <laughs> I will ask you this when, when, you know, you're 20 years with Scott at Baylor and that's a long time as an assistant, I'm wondering what those conversations with God and kind of maybe the, the moments leading up to you saying yes to this this role with Kansas State, like what 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 was that time like? Take us back to being obviously you met with Kansas State, you were offered a position, but just knowing that this was the right yes from God to say, obviously you can look back now and be like, yep, it, this was a great year, and we saw what happened, and it was the right yes. But at the time, you're ultimately putting your faith in God that you believed this is where He's directing you to. What was that time like for you in conversations with the Lord, and certainly with your family as well? Um, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd actually like to back up like three years before that and um, get into the point in my life where I could tell God, I could say verbally to God, God, if you want me to be an assistant coach for the rest of my life, I'm okay with that. Because for a long time, I wasn't, I was hmm. frustrated. I was wondering, God, you know, what's going on, you know? Uh, I, I would say the right things out loud, um, you know, hey, God's got something better for me or whatever lesson God wants to teach me that I need to learn. I want to learn it quickly so that I can move on to the next spot and whatever. But on the inside, there was a frustration and, uh, and you know, maybe maybe I wasn't good enough or, you know, maybe, you know just those say and being frustrated that maybe that wasn't in God's plans for me. And um, I, there wasn't something that I wanted to embrace. And but about three years ago, I I really I I could honestly say it that God, if being an assistant for the rest of my life is what you want for me, I'm okay with that. Because I was very secure in who I was as a man, who I was in Him, uh, and that um, there was a peace about it, right? That that I didn't need a title. And and then I said to Him, God, if you want me to stop coaching altogether. And go into some other form of ministry. I'm willing to do that also. Hmm. And when once I was able to do that, then he, I was able to see that there were so many lives that I could pour into, you know, help other guys reach their goals and dreams of being head coaches or going from high school to college or college to professional, whatever it was. You know, just help guys get better in this business. I could see the ministry in that, in sharing, you know, what God had done in my life and what I'd learned. And just watching other people grow in this business and that there's a different way to, to, to coach, right? It's not necessarily, you don't have to do what everybody else is doing. You know, there's, there's a way that God has planned for us that, that we, can, we can intertwine our faith into this basketball thing and really, really impact lives. And, um, and so once that happened, I just had this peace and this joy and, 
Yeah. And therefore, when Kansas State came along, um, you know, I just I asked God for peace. God, just give me peace. Ray and I prayed that morning when they were coming to my house. And because uh, I didn't have peace leading up to it. You know, there's this nervous anxiety of, is this really what God has for me? You know, what's going on? And but that morning we we hugged, we prayed. Those people walked in the door and God gave me this peace. And, and I just knew that this is what, you know, God had for me. Wow. That's a great story. He is Jerome Tang from Kansas State. Um, I don't think we've ever heard, or at least I don't think I, I've heard your testimony of coming to faith in Christ. Can you share that? Man, my, uh, my mom's side of the family is all Muslims. And mm. my dad, his father died when he was really young, and his mom put him in the in an orphanage. He had him and his two brothers, so there was three of them put in an orphanage. It was a Catholic orphanage. Uh, when my dad was sixteen and could leave that orphanage, he got as far away from <laughs> the from yeah. from God, the church, from there, as, as he could. Right? Um, didn't have a good experience. Um, my aunt uh, was the first person in the family on my mom's side. Uh, to give her life to the Lord. And, you know, being a Muslim girl in a Muslim family to convert to Christianity is is not necessarily a, there wasn't a warm reception to that. Sure. Right. And uh, and this is in Trinidad. And so right. when my, my mom and dad, they left Trinidad when I was three to go to St. Croix. Uh, they were pursuing citizenship in, in the States. And they left me with my aunt and my aunt would take me to church. And uh, man, from a very young age, uh, like my aunt would tell me that, like, I just embraced the love of Jesus and learning songs and Bible stories. And I, I know I remember scripture and, and songs and Bible stories from when I was three years old. Wow. And just my, my whole life, I've been, been around it and just seen what what a walk with Christ was. And I, I, you know, I'm not, I don't have like, I know some people have like the exact day that they gave their life to Jesus and stuff. I, I don't remember not living my life for Jesus. Now that doesn't mean I was perfect and I was always doing everything right. Okay. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, you know, I am a, I'm a sinner saved by grace, but, but my life has always, I've always walked in this favor of God and his, his hand of protection on me that even in my foolishness, God was with me. And so hmm. uh, I, I, tell, I used to tell our staff, I remember one of our very first staff meetings at Baylor, we were talking about something spiritual. And I said, well, I've always felt like I was God's favorite. <laughs> and they all looked at me like I was crazy. I was like, well, I mean, shouldn't we all feel like we're his favorite? He says we're the apple of his eye. And, yes. You know, and, and, and he said about David, a man after my own heart who would fulfill all my will and I know he's not a respecter of person, so therefore, you know, I can be a man after God's own heart who would fulfill all of his will, you know. And uh, so it's just that's always been my view that, that God just he just loved me. And, um, yeah. you know, and and so uh, knowing that I'm operating in his favor has always like in the, in the good and the bad. I knew I was in his favor. Hmm. If that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. No, it does. Um, but at, at some point, you realize God is directing you to coaching. When does that take place? Like, do you start to see that in high school and college, or where, where does that moment when you realize, oh, okay, God, you want me to do this this whole coaching thing? Okay, let's try this. Um, man, I was really passionate about the game of basketball, uh, but I was uh, also I loved working with young people, so I knew I wanted to be a youth pastor, mm. and then I fell in love with the game of basketball and I had the best youth pastor in the world. His name is Mike Allard and he's a pastor right now in Houston. And I'm actually speaking for father's day at the church. Nice. Uh, it's a church I grew up in. He just moved it. He became the pastor of that church. And, um, but man, he had this, he had this incredible way of delivering the word of God and showing us how much fun it was to live for God and how rewarding it was. And that, uh, and he had this, this great vision. Like, I mean, we didn't ever do anything like regular. Like we didn't have ice cream Sundays. We had the world's largest ice cream Sunday. We didn't have Easter egg hunt. It was the world's largest Easter. I mean, it was everything we did. And yeah. I mean, he would, he would, I would be around him and he would pray. I remember one time we went on a ski trip and uh, to Colorado and it didn't snow and they were going to shut down the, 
the slopes the last day because there wasn't enough snow. And I remember him that night praying, just out loud, God, we just want you to send us some white fluffy stuff. Nothing, nothing fantastic, nothing spectacular, God. Just just big yeah. white fluffy flakes, you know, and, and it snowed so much that it almost they almost had to shut it down because there was too much snow <laughs> that night. And no snow was expected. Wow. And I learned there, I said, man, God listens to this guy. You know, there's something about his life that God just, just listens, you know. And so, yes. uh, you know, my mom, you know, she would pray for stuff and God would answer her prayers. And so I learned I learned quickly, man, that when you live your life for God, that he listens to your prayers and, and he honors you. And, you know, my mom, you know, taught me to tithe at a very young age and the, the benefits of tithing and just, just all those things I've, I've learned uh, from people just watching their examples. So... When I became, I wanted to be a youth pastor and I was passionate about basketball. I remember telling them, Brother Mike, I want to be the youth pastor at a church that has a Christian school so I can coach the basketball team. And then two days later, Dr. Cooper, Jennifer Cooper, who was the uh, administrator at Heritage Christian Academy, called him and said, I need a Christian guy who can coach basketball. So two days after I spoke it, wow. God had made that connection to that person. And uh, a couple of days later, I'm at it you know, Heritage Christian in Cleveland, Texas, and hmm. I'm the basketball coach. And then uh, a few months later, I'm teaching a class at the school. And a few months later, the youth pastor leaves and I'm the youth pastor at the church. And God wow. gave me my dream, you know. And so, wow. um, you know, I, I would open the doors to the church and have these great speakers come in and we'd get 35, 40 kids. On Saturdays, I'd open the gym and there'd be 70 guys in there. If I had pizza, there'd be another 50 girls. Yep. And I found out real quick that I can impact more lives on a basketball court than I could behind a pulpit. And, you know, that's that, that's the way God drew me and led me in that direction. Wow. You were there for 10 years and ultimately you leave to go to Baylor at a time that probably was really in, in, I was at ESPN for, th I was there for 17 years, but I was there in the third year of my time at ESPN when the whole Baylor thing went down. Um, and then Scott in, inherits this team that's really going through a lot and somehow you find your way into this world. What was that time like for you to leave all of what you just described, right? Youth pastor, coach, you know, impacting young people at, at this Christian school and then going over to Baylor at a time where maybe nobody else was going or willing to go. I don't know. But what was that like pivoting into, into the college world? Man, like if you grew up in Texas, and you were involved with Christian or private schools in Texas, um, that's where the state championship was held at Baylor University, right? right. So yeah. it was always a very positive experience for me being at Baylor. I remember our second year, we won the state championship, but in our semifinal game, I'm sitting on the bench next to my best friend, T. Hicks, who's my assistant coach, and we're looking around the Farrell Center, and we're like, Man, this is a terrific place. Wouldn't it be cool to coach here one day? And I just remember, I just, I just remember telling them, man, I, I'm okay. a coach here. And you know, so here's ten years later, and I'm at Baylor, and I, I knew what a terrific school it was. I knew the values of the university, and I knew that the people who were there before didn't value what was important about the school, so they didn't take advantage of their recruiting niche. And so it was to me, I, I didn't, what, what we were, I didn't see what we were going into as this monumental task. It was a, a great opportunity that God had opened for us and uh, we just embraced it. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. What a, what a journey that was too. That's another 20 years, right? Of your life and obviously winning a title in 2021 and sort of the culmination of building up this program to where you guys were able to win a championship and ultimately bringing you back to Kansas state. And you have your own run this past year going all the way to the elite eight. Um, when I was watching you guys make that run, we certainly here at sports spectrum were fascinated in how intentional you were about mentioning the Lord, whether it was in a post game press conference or whether it was right after the game, when you're being interviewed in a moment where maybe you're directly thinking about the win, you automatically directly defaulted, I think to, to Jesus, which I thought was great. Let me ask you about that. How important is it? Because the platforms increased. I'm sure you mentioned speaking on Father's Day. I'm sure there's been a lot of requests coming your way just from having success. That's just the nature of sports. But how intentional or how important has it been for you to be intentional 
about using your platform as a coach to to share the gospel? Yeah, that goes back to the trust word, right? Like, if yeah. God's gonna God trust me with this platform, uh, that that I was gonna use it to honor Him. And at Baylor, <clears throat> we we talked about the word joy, right? And joy means Jesus first, others second, yourself last. Yeah. And we we taught our guys about joy interviews. So when you do an interview, acknowledge Jesus, give credit to others, and then talk about yourself last. At at Kansas State, being a state school, we've kind of had to turn it a little bit. And so we talk about win interviews, right? And so win, W-I-N. So the W is your why, right? I have to encourage our guys to talk about your why, whether it's your grandma, whether it's your family, whether it's, you know, somebody – Something or somebody that that's that's a bigger the bigger reason why you play the game of basketball, yeah. Right, and then the the I is then we talk about our inner circle, and that's that's our teammates, right? The guys in this room, right? Give make sure you give them credit for your accomplishment, what's going on. Then finally, we talk about the end. We say those are the numbers. Then you can talk about your points, assists, rebounds. You know, you can talk about those things. But let's let's have win interv- interviews. And so I I, I tried to. Um, uh, you know, just to to be the example of that for our guys. And for me, I understand that um, my why uh, that I do this is to honor God. Mm. And, uh, and, and this is a ministry for me. You know, it just happens to be on a basketball court. And so I wanted to make sure that, that our guys saw me give credit to God first and then talk about the other things. Oh, that's really good. Um as we wind down here, as you look back, you just finished season one, right? And you're heading into season two. What do you think you'll do similarly the same? Obviously, you want to win games and go further and go to the final four and win the, win it all. But what's something that you went through and you saw, okay, this was the first year. I might want to tweak this a little bit or fine tune this from the way that you coached the year before or the way you went about carrying yourself or the way you went about your your journey with Jesus, whatever that might be. What do you take from year one that you want to improve on and, and be better at in year two? Yeah, um, that's that's a really good question. Uh, there are a couple of things. You know, our our focus this year was elevating the program and like just every aspect of it, like how our guys lived, how we ate, how we traveled, you know, just how how we practice, you know, just all those things. And um and this year, you know, our theme, we're gonna be all in. Like we need everybody all in no nobody because there were still some guys whether they were players or coaches or administrators whatever that that still you know did everything kind of with some skepticism hey is this thing really going to work right and when you have when you have six players in june is this thing really going to work you know um even going into july and not having a full team yet you know is it going to work and then as the season goes along can you really win with all this positivity, can you really win with a no cussing culture? You know, um, and so now it's about everybody being all in, ten toes, both hands. You know, pulling in the same direction. Um, that that that's going to be super super important for us. And and then be real intentional about fighting for our culture, right? And it starts with our staff because every kingdom that that's ever existed fell from within. Right. Yep. And and so it's about the staff and us being willing to hold each other accountable. And throughout scripture, there are a bunch of great men. Uh, very few of them have finished great. And uh, I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's just, just a lesson from David to Solomon to Asher to Samson. Very few of them have, have finished great. They allowed their their victories and their egos to get in the way. And um, so for our staff, it's about just really, really fighting for our culture and us really holding each other accountable and and understanding that nothing that we accomplished was in our own strength, right? It wasn't by might, it wasn't by power, but it was by the spirit of the Lord. Yes. And, uh, you know, the lesson I just taught the guys, our staff was, you know, Samson, you know, all the things he accomplished, you it always said that the spirit of the Lord came on him mightily. The spirit of the Lord came on him mightily and when when he fell, it said he did not know that the spirit of the Lord left him. Mm. And we never want to be in that situation. And so it's it's really just being really intentional, being all in, fighting for our culture and and understanding that this is God's program and, and we're simply here to, to honor him. 
He is Jerome Tang from Kansas State, all in for 2023, 2024. Coach, thank you for the time. We appreciate it. We've been excited to talk to you. We were cheering you guys on throughout the season last year and uh, excited for what God's going to do with you all in this upcoming season. All the best to you, and thanks for being here on Sports Spectrum. Hey, thanks a lot. Go Cats. Thanks so much for watching today on Sports Spectrum. Make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos. And if you want more stories on sports and faith, check out our website, sportsspectrum.com.